Welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 714. We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I am revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest, Chris Fallone. Hey, Chris, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm ready to go. Air-cooled ready. All right. Love the air cool. It goes way back into my youth. Chris <laughs> Vallone is the owner of Classic VW Bugs in Congress, New York. He's created a global following with his vintage VW Bug restorations and his how-to restoration video tips educating enthusiasts like you and me around the world. Chris has earned numerous awards with his beautifully restored VWs, including being accepted as the first bug ever to the Fairfield Concorde Elegance. His cars have also been on the lawns of the Greenwich Concorde Elegance, the Lime Rock Concorde, and the Hemmings Concorde. His restorations have appeared in Hot VW Magazines, Air Cool Classics Magazine, Volks World, Fox News, USA Today, and the Journal News. He's also worked on collector and celebrity Jerry Seinfeld's 1956 Oval VW. So, Chris, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a brief moment, share a little bit more about your business and, of course, your passion for VWs and automobiles? Absolutely. Um, it all started back in college. I went to school for fine arts to be an animator. I grew up on Looney Tunes cartoons and uh, <laughs> Walt too. Disney cartoons. That's it. And uh, I always thought in college that the artist needs a bug. And I wanted to be the artist with the bug going to school. So I commuted to college back and forth. And uh, it was my mission to find a beetle during my college years to hold my gear, my portfolio bins that I would take you know, to and from class. Yeah. Uh, and I was even starting filmmaking at the time too. So I would have camera gear um, and tripods and things like that to throw in the back of the car. I just wanted to be that person with a bug. <laughs> and uh, you know, I did 10 years of film after college. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote and directed my own stuff for a while and I wanted to be like Spielberg. But you know, realizing that uh, when you get older, you get a little wiser, <laughs> yeah. and uh, nice. that is a lottery ticket. You know, it's yeah. it's not guaranteed. Yep. So towards the end of my uh, short career there, about ten year career, I started looking towards internet marketing and starting a business on the internet. I did not want to work for anybody. So I have two older sisters that are. Uh, have their own businesses. My father had his old business after he was uh, retired from NYPD. So I, I wasn't built to be under a roof, you know, <laughs> yeah. under somebody else. Yeah. And so I looked towards eBay and I told my dad, you know, while we were, while I was filming, I was, I was tinkering with bugs here and there. And I never really thought to turn it into a business until one time I, I sold a film internationally and the money I needed to pay my lawyer and my uh, film rep that was out in California, the fees for selling that film, I didn't have it. Mm. So I was a starving artist. So I said to my dad, you know, I, I think I got to sell one of the bugs we got. And uh, sure enough, I turned towards eBay and I honed up on some courses on how to do it right. And I, I said to myself, I said, you know, I have I have a film background. I got gear. I got an editing suite. Why don't I film the car? Yeah. And cut it to music, titles and effects and throw it up on eBay. Well, long, you know, long story short, we did that. We made money on that car and we looked at each other and said, you know what? Maybe this could be something. <laughs> a business is born. <laughs> That's it. And, you know, from there on, I mean, when I first told my dad I wanted to do an eBay business, he looked at me like, what are you crazy? I don't even know what that is, you yeah. know. Yeah. And uh, my dad's old school. So uh, it was a wonderful thing. And that's how we started pretty much. And started out of a one car garage in a, my parents were living in a gated community. I was living with them still. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, after a while, though, those people in, the, in that community did not like to see four, five, six bugs parked around uh, there. No, the homeowners <laughs> association was probably coming down on your folks pretty hard. Exactly. So, but uh, we had to start somewhere. Yeah. So. so many great businesses have started in a garage. When you look back at some of the incredibly famous people like Steve Jobs with Apple and Hewlett Packard and uh, Walt Disney, I mean, all these great companies started out of garages. So uh, you had a great start for sure, even though you got kicked out of the gated community. Yep. I understand. Yep. Well, as we continue on your journey, I always like to start by asking my guests for a success quote. This is some kind of saying that's been instrumental in forming your life and your success. And it's a very nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars. Yeah. So, Chris, take the wheel. Quote that I've been following, uh, I guess, 
for a little while now is we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Mm, love it. So that's from uh, George Bernard Shaw. Mm -hmm. And I saw that quote. My girlfriend works as a vet tech in an animal hospital. Oh, OK. And I saw that quote on a picture with two dogs playing in the beach, <laughs> you know, and I said to myself, that's that's like me and my dad. Yeah. And, you know, I, I said, when I come to work, I'm playing with toys. Mm. Uh, it doesn't feel like work. You know, I come here. I look forward to my Mondays. Yeah. To come here and say, you know, what are we going to find this week? You know, what adventure are we going to, you know, trek out to to go bring back from a garage or a barn out there? Or, yeah. you know, what are we going to dig up in a car that we're stripping that we find, you know, underneath the carpet or the mats or something? There's always something very interesting with these cars. They have such history. People have such memorable times with them. Mm -hmm. It's very nostalgic. Uh, anywhere I go, I go pump up gas with a Beetle and there's somebody coming up to you to talk to you. Oh, yeah. You found the secret sauce to life, my friend. That's for sure. That's what Cars yeah is all about. People that have found their passion and wrapped it into their vocation. And boy, when you can do that, life is definitely bliss for sure. So, and I love your comments about finding things in cars. I bought an old car once and I took the back door panel off to correct something and down inside there, it had fallen through an ashtray opening was a little matchbox car that yep. you kind of thought that some little kid was sitting in the back, lost that car in there and... Where did my car go? <laughs> After sure. I ate it. So, yeah, lots of great things. I've had some friends that work in restoration business that have collections of coins and things they found from cars and all the, all the cool stuff. A few years ago, we found, and it was actually, it was showcased on our local news here, I found Army dog tags. Oh, my God. Yep. And uh, it was in a 54 Beetle that we grabbed out of Mississippi. Wow. And I threw that up on Facebook and... I mean, I had the media here the next, like in an hour. <laughs> they, were, they, they were wondering. And sure enough, they looked up those texts and that fellow was still alive. And oh, my gosh. In, in Texas. And we communicated with him and uh, he knew the numbers verbatim off that tag. Wow. So what was really funny was he's, uh, there was a dent above the um, – like the front header where the sun visor is. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and he said, he's like, is there a dent there? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, yeah, that's, that's my head hitting that when I went off a cliff with the car. No way. Yep, and the car hit its nose and stood straight up after it hit the bottom. Oh, my gosh. That, <laughs> that's incredible. You know, I have a, a good friend who's going to be a future guest here on Cars, yeah. He works for Denison International, uh, which Denison has been a guest on the show. His name's Tim Willard, and he works on some really fascinating old cars. And just last week, he posted a picture on Facebook. He was working on a 1951 Kaiser and inside the door handle, which was wrapped in leather, they took the leather off. There was a plastic door handle underneath. was a note, and it said, built by T.V. Smith, Toledo, Ohio, 8863. And so wow. obviously that car was restored again in 63, and somebody rebuilt that door handle. But, yeah, there's all sorts of magical treasures we can find in it's old beautiful. cars. Yeah, very, very yeah. fun. Well, let's go back in time and talk a little bit about a story that instigated your passion for cars. Is there a pivotal moment when you realized that you were indeed a car guy? Probably when I was a kid, maybe middle school, when I was picking up uh, remote control cars. You know, when I was picking up the cars where you actually had to build them mm -hmm. and put your own motors in them, your own suspensions, your own radio gear, all that sort of thing. And I was building them with my father back then. And even at the time, my grandfather, my dad's dad. And I guess we got some handy guys in our family, you know, um, yes. I'm the only boy, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, we started tinkering back then. So I always had an interest and my dad was always into old cars. Uh -huh. So even when I was a kid, but I never really dove into a car, an everyday car or, or anything like that until about college time when I got my first Beetle. So from there, I mean, that was another pivot right there. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, Chris, what I'd love to do is take a look at some of the roads and journeys you've taken in your life and your career and talk about a huge challenge or a big failure that you faced along the way. Most importantly, I want to know how you overcame that situation. What did it teach you so you could move forward? So uh, tell us about that experience and tell us how it helped you gain even more momentum in your business or your career. Sure. Uh, I guess because I was an artist at heart first. I knew nothing about business. Mm. So I didn't know anything about sheer numbers, dollar in, dollar out every month, budgeting, things like that. So when I first started the business, all I really calculated was, you know, what I purchased the car for, what I painted it for, and then how much I uh, 
or parts mm-hmm. uh, I, I put into it. I never really calculated my hours mm. and the time it takes to put these together. So when we were doing this out of the one-car garage, I didn't really have any overhead. So when it came down to numbers like that, I, I was kind of inexperienced. So when people started calling me, seeing my cars going up on eBay and telling me, I, I don't want to bid on your cars. I want you to build me a bug. Ah, okay. That was about after a year I started uh, you know, doing them out of my father's garage. Yeah. That's when I knew, okay, this is kind of, I got to really look into this now. Right. I had to grow over time. So I was, you know, many times I underestimated how long the car would take to get done. So, I mean, that happens. It's still common today. But now I got a better grasp on things and now I'm really monitoring things in and out. So, you know, you start to learn when you make those mistakes when, yeah, I didn't make much money, if at all, any money right. on, that, <laughs> on that car. Right, exactly. Well, what's a good takeaway for those people out there that, because this is a pretty common thought with artists, especially builders of cars, because it always takes so much more time. Are there some resources or places that you went to kind of help you understand the business side of restoring cars? Um, You know, I guess, you know, there's so many shows on TV. You can grab little tidbits from them. There was times, you know, you can look on YouTube even, but even times I would call some shops that are out there. Mm-hmm. And if they were friendly enough to, to give me some insight, uh, yeah. that's what I do. In the very beginning, when I was looking into you know building for people, you know I hit up a handful of the shops that are across the country that do Volkswagen restoration and uh, gave me a general idea of where to start uh, yeah. and, and, and really where to you know position myself so I wouldn't come off as a you know an inexperienced businessman. Yeah, that's what I did. Well, you know, that's a great lesson there for listeners out there is reach out to other professionals. That's the best and fastest way many times you can learn things. And if they're kind enough to share their information with you, which a lot of people are, especially in the automotive industry, then it can help you move forward. But yeah, that's why when people go to have their cars restored at great shops and they go, it's going to cost how much? Right. All you have to do is say, well, look, these are the hours that have to go into it. Each of these people and all these processes, not just the car itself and the paint that lays down, it's all the hours that goes into prep. So um, it kind of surprises people sometimes, I think. Many, many times. I mean, most people that do call us that want to build, um, you know, when I break it down for them, I mean, there's still people that think, you know, they can get a bug completed for, you know, 10, 15,000. And I said, well, if you want to do it yourself. Yeah, <laughs> good you know, luck. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's what you have to do. I mean, I, I, you know, there's no way I can. No, of course not. Not if you're going to do it right. Absolutely. I think some of these TV shows, the reality shows, have really confused maybe a novice because they go, well, they built that car in a week. Right. Uh, yeah. No. Not really. Yeah. No. Yep. There's a lot of discrepancies there. So I tell that people that all the time. I mean, we're over a two-year wait list here. Oh, you know, wonderful. And I, I, I tell people that, you know, it's I probably if you signed on to me today, I probably wouldn't be able to get to you until next year. And then from there, figure within a year's time, I can have the car done for you. Wow. Well, time to hire some more people then expand that business. Yes, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. That's great to hear. Well, Chris, let's shift gears and go to the other end of the spectrum. I'd love for you to share what I call a career aha moment. You kind of alluded to one there when you decided to sell a car to kind of pay for some of your film activities. But is there a specific time when those headlights came on and illuminated a new path for you in your business or your career? And tell us the steps you took to turn that aha moment into a success. Yes. When we got the cease and desist letters in that gated community where we were doing the work, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the big aha moment. We found a 54 Beetle uh, in the area that somebody uh, you know tipped me off on. And we went to go see it and we grabbed it for 500 bucks. And you know this thing was four flat tires, but it, it was a beautiful black uh, original car with the red interior. And mm. you know we put that car together from you know, body off, paint, body, uh, you know, interiors and everything. And I said to myself, you know, let's throw it up on eBay and see how it does. Yeah. If this car sells, then it's time for me to get out of here. This is the real deal. And yeah. I got to get a shop. And uh, we sold that car on eBay in two days. I had to buy it now on it. It was gone. Nice. Um, and uh, I think the guy who then owned it was uh, Billy Joel Armstrong from uh, Green Day. Oh, really? Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Nice. He wound up picking that up. And I said to my dad, and that was right at the time when we got the letter in from the homeowners association to <laughs> yeah. say, you got to stop ripping motors out of the garage and, you know, yeah. get yeah. going. So it was perfect timing. Yeah. Well, there's always that point in time with a business where you have to become real, uh, yes. quote unquote, and you got to kind of bite the bullet and find an office and move into it or a building or a shop and that kind of thing. So um, that put kind of pushes you out of the nest to uh, make your business a real deal. So very no cool. Well, I would assume you've had many proud moments in your business because you've made a lot of people so happy with the cars they purchase from you or cars you restore for them. Is there one proudest moment that you could share with us? Uh, yeah, getting a call from Jerry Seinfeld. Well, that was nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, from being a fan of somebody, 
uh-huh. um, that you know basically feels you know someone like me, an average guy, to reach out to somebody like that is almost un- unthinkable or unreachable. For him to call me, and while I'm driving in my car, and I'm like. No way. Yeah, who's this? Come on, Ma. Is this you? Exactly. <laughs> My dad told me you better pull over now because we're heading into a dead spot. So if that cell tower kicks off, you're in bad tr- you're in Yeah, don't hang up on Jerry when he talks. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was a that was a nice thing. I mean, he would for one of the things he. He really liked about me was seeing the passion he saw in me and my YouTube videos. So, you know, I do a video a week on YouTube. Nice. Yeah. You know, I think it gets out there and I get in front of the camera. You know, I'm comfortable in front of the camera. So I'm communicating with people on on a down to earth level. Fantastic. Now, you worked on a 56 oval window? Correct. Yeah. For him? Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Well, he's a guy I'd love to have on this show. He's a hard guy to find and get to. That's for sure. He's got a lot of walls around him, but maybe maybe yes. someday he'll come and be a guest. I know that he loves talking cars, so uh, maybe I'll land him sometime. But congratulations for that. That's pretty cool. Obviously, that helped uh, springboard you to other clients and things, and having him as a client uh, reference material is uh, certainly sure. an awesome thing. Well, yep. let's have a little bit of fun and go back in time again. You talked a little bit about uh, that first bug, but what was your first really special vehicle? And maybe you could share a memory you have of that car. Yeah, probably that car, that first car from college, the 71 Super Beetle convertible. Mm -hmm. And that was the time where I said to my dad, I got enough money saved up. I want my own car. Because my parents, they gave me a hand-me-down. It was a 87 Crown Victoria had battering ram. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> the Crown just, Vic. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know. And I said to myself, I can't be going to school on this thing. Yeah. This is, I, I'm not picking up girls with this. So. Not gonna work. No, not gonna work. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. pretty cool. I, I mentioned to you and my listeners know that uh, one of my very my second car I ever owned was a '67 Gia. Just loved that yeah. car. Did a lot of restoration work on it and drove it for a long time, all the way through college and. My sister had a 73 bug that I helped her fix and work on and things. So I share some of that old VW air-cooled passion with you. And sure. My neighbor across the street, Bruce, he has a beautiful 58 bug that's kind of a great dark gray color with a red interior. And mm-hmm. every time I'm sitting here and watch him pull out, I would just want to run out and go, take me for a ride. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I'm telling you. It's uh, that first car. That's the car I cut my teeth on. You know, basically, uh, okay. I, yeah. I, I said, you know, it, it was all I and, you know, back then it was in the late 90s where you still looked up in the newspaper to find a, a you know, a used car. And I found a little close in you know, a local classified and uh, I went and saw it. And yeah, it was fire engine red with the white top, white walls. And I was I was gaga over it. Oh, yeah. And uh, but I, I, you know, since I didn't know anything about the car, I didn't know where to look. I didn't know, you know, the, the, the crucial rust points and yeah, things like that. Yeah. So on that, uh, that car had had a. Whatever went wrong with it was supposed to go wrong with a Beetle did happen on that Beetle. So I blew the motor. <laughs> Learning curves. <laughs> Absolutely. It was rusty. You know, the doors didn't want to shut right, you know, things yeah. like that. But I, I wound up restoring that car and I actually owned that car for eight years. Wow. And that was the longest I've ever owned a Beetle. Wow. So ever since then, you know, it, it's the, with the business, I don't think I've held on to a Beetle for more than maybe two or three years. Oh, gosh. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. Well, how about seller's remorse uh, with cars you've let go? Is there one in particular you wish you had back and you hadn't sold? Yeah. I mean, that changes over time. The more, you know, I keep doing these cars because you always get better over time. Sure. But there is one in particular that I really, I, I mean, there's a few. <laughs> uh-huh. There's this one in particular I keep going back to, and it was a 54 ragtop that I bought, uh, I'd say maybe three or four years ago. The, actually, the car found me. The guy called me up at, out of Pennsylvania, and it was a rock solid car, straight car, straight as can be. I mean, it just, you just don't find a rock solid 54 oval ragtop wow. in the Northeast. And, you know, never been in an accident. And you can tell the car was in the garage for about 30 years. Yeah, okay. And bought that car, and we restored it from top to bottom. I mean, I don't think there was a flaw on the car after I finished it. And, you know, usually when you restore a car, there's always something. uh, I scratched the nick defender. Or, you know, that that bolt is frozen in there. It doesn't want to come out. Whatever the case may be. But this car, it, it just came apart so beautifully and went together so beautifully. And it was the first car that I shipped to Florida to be part of a VW show down there. Uh-huh. It was just a beautiful thing to open that ragtop and see palm trees through my roof. <laughs> yes. You know, <laughs> no I never did I never did that before and I said to myself, this is a, you know, a great opportunity. I just got it was beautiful and it was in the middle of January, February. Oh, right. uh, so I was getting out of New York and going to the warm weather and it was just a beautiful thing and I wound up selling that car to London. Oh wow. A guy in London. Yeah, so 
But every time I have on my screensaver going on on my computer, I see that car flash up on the screen. Oh, yeah. I'm like, man, look at that baby, you know? (laughs) Yeah, nice memories, nice memories. Very cool. Well, let's talk about today and tomorrow. What are you guys working on there? What are you doing right now that has you really excited and fired up? And also maybe tell our listeners a little bit about how you go about a project. Are most of your projects restorations for clients or are you actually finding cars, restoring them, and then selling them? Yeah, we do both. I mean, most of our business is restoration for clientele. Uh, but every now and then, I always search the web on a daily basis for mm-hmm. these cars. Or I have people that are have eyeballs for me across the country, and they'll send me a link or call me up and say, Chris, I found there's a guy next door. He's got this bug, and yeah. he's looking to dump it. You know, But we're currently working on, for myself, I picked it up uh, late uh, December 15, another 54 Oval Ragtop. The family called me. They're out of, they were out of Ohio. And it was in their cellar slash garage for, yeah, over 30 years. And numbers matching unrestored 54 wow. racks. So I'm really looking forward to that one. It's been at the body shop for over a year now. Uh, it, it had more rust than the previous 54, you know, that I was talking about. So it's taken a while to get that back. But I'm really looking forward to that. And I said to my dad, if I got to keep anything, you know, these these early rag tops are becoming, you know, more and more rare. Right. And if there's something I got to keep, I got to keep something, <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, because I keep selling something and, and I've been, I feel bad when they go. Uh, so I said to him, this is a numbers matching car, all bone stock, all original paneling. And I got to keep this one. Uh, we'll see what that one. But the other uh, or is a, the others are clientele projects mm-hmm. and we're working on a 57 oval ragtop, a 56 ragtop, a 65 old original bug that a guy uh, cut his teeth on in, in, uh, in the 80s driving. Uh, so, you know, we, we got a lot of stuff in the works. And yeah. uh, but those, those ragtops and those original pieces are what's real. They're really special. Well, nice to have in a shop like yours a piece of eye candy for people to come in and go, wow, this is what I could expect. This is a special car. And of course, it's an investment grade car like that. It's not going to ever go down in value. So um, correct. it'll always be worth something. But yeah, you got to keep something for yourself. My goodness. That's it. <laughs> but, you know, on the flip side, you are a business. You're not just a collector because if you were just a collector, you wouldn't sell anything. So I right. understand you got to you got to flip things and turn things. It's like a, a house flipper or anything else. So yep. uh, understood. Well, here's a very introspective question for you, Chris. If you were a car, I kind of know how you're going to answer this, but <laughs> but we'll see. What kind of car would Chris be and why? Yeah, I guess it would be a bug, but just because of the international historical value of mm-hmm. it. The type of thing where it always gets you where you need to go. The fact that you can you can fix this car with your home tools. You go, like I said, you go to the gas station and people are coming up to you. Uh, you want attention, you drive a bug. Yeah. The history is there. And then even if you're not a car person, I tell this to people a lot when I go to car shows and you see a lot of these uh, guys there, they're with their girlfriends and their girlfriends don't really want to be at the car show. And, you know, but when they see a bug, they know exactly what it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody loves the bug. It's just a universal smile car. If Absolutely. you will. Yeah. That's exactly it. So if it wasn't a bug, maybe an Izetta. <laughs> okay. Well, there's, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's something kind of on the, you know, the, the flip side, a pretty rare car around here, but those are kind of cool too. I guess just being an, uh, you know, coming from an animation background, you know, cartoon background. Oh, yeah. Or has the animated look to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Ah, nice. Okay. Well, I was hoping that's the way you'd answer that question. Uh-huh. You got to be a bug, Chris. Well, ne- up next is the last lap. But before we put the pedal to the metal, let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors. <laughs> Okay, Chris, we are back and we're entering the last lap and I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of the throttle answers. So here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received other than that homeowners association asking you to leave the neighborhood? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I, I guess it would be follow your passion. You know, it's we live in a world today where we have information at our fingertips yeah. You know, so back in the day when we didn't have the internet and you might maybe wanted to get into, uh, you know, uh, car restoration and maybe you didn't know how to even, you know, touch a tool or, you know, how to use a screwdriver or a wrench, you know, it doesn't have to be that way anymore. Right. Um, I didn't know how to work on cars at all. So, but thank God the information is out there now and whatever field you're interested in getting into, follow it. You'll learn it. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to make, take risks make those mistakes and learn and just keep going. Yeah. And I'll remind the listeners again that Chris has an awesome video series that he puts out there about the cars that he does and so forth. So he's another great resource there for that type of 
uh, learning experience for those folks out there that want to learn how to turn a wrench or uh, put paint on a car, whatever. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has helped contribute to your success? Uh, I would say attention to detail. Mm, Important. Um, Yep. I follow, uh, I I pretty much know the Beatle year by year uh, and the different changes that they had throughout Mm -hmm. those years. And I know there wasn't a lot to the average person, but year after year, Volkswagen did many things mid-year that they changed. And I think that goes hand in hand with my other mantra, which is art, making art on wheels. Mm. So I'm an artist and I want to make art on wheels. And, you know, people complain to me sometimes like you over restore the car. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm making, yeah, maybe I do. Okay. Or well, maybe my paint jobs are much better than they were from factory. And, you know, maybe we'll upgrade the interior to a nicer vintage looking interior. But I have people that are looking to have me build them a bug that they want to look at. They want a trailer to shows. I had a guy that I built a bug for, and he didn't even want any fluids in the mud. Oh, my gosh. He just was going to push it around. (laughs) Exactly. So it's one of those things where, you know, yeah, it's it's an art piece. People will put it in their showroom, and and they'll look at it. And and that's what I'm striving for, just, uh, you know. Yeah, very nice. Well, how about a resource? There's lots of great resources. We just mentioned that. And of course, your website, which I will post on your Cars Yeah show notes page for people to link to in your videos, of course. But is there another resource that you think our listeners would really enjoy? Uh, I think just still YouTube, Google is your friend. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they are so important today. I mean, whenever I'm stuck, I mean, you Google it. It's, it's amazing yeah. what comes up yeah. at your fingertips. You know, there's another website, a video, a VW website called the Samba. Yeah. Which is a great, Love it. Great. Yep. Great website for historical facts and, uh, yeah. you know, listings and things. So, uh, yeah. you know, all the years uh, when my kids were younger and I would have questions, my son always would tease me and say, Dad, just Google it. Everything's there. Mm-hmm. And of course, he's graduated from college now. And guess where he's working? Google. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So now I just tease him and say, well, I don't need to Google it anymore. I can just Blake it because his name's Blake. He's oh, like, you- he's like, no, dad, I'm too busy. You just need to Google it. Everything's out there. You'll find everything you need. So and you do. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's amazing, yep. Now, if you could have a drink with anyone in the automotive field, living or deceased, who would it be? That was a tough one to think of. I, I, I thought Paul Newman. Oh, yeah. He's been you know, mentioned a couple times since I just started asking that question. Yep, because – and I only – I thought of him because, number one, he's he's a cool guy and he's a car guy, right? Yeah. And he's an actor. I mean, he's he had a great look to him. But I remember seeing that ad with him and the Beatle in the background. <laughs> oh, that's right. And yeah. uh, I said, you know what? I'm sure he drove that. I'm sure he like he he probably had a uh, you know an attachment to the Beetle to some degree. And uh, you know why not sit down with him and and have a drink? Well, that'd be pretty cool. I had Matt DeAndrea, who's a co-host of uh, Adam Carolla's Carcast podcast on the show, and he helped produce uh, was a producer of a great movie about Paul Newman. Uh, hopefully, he had a chance to see that, but about his racing career and so forth. So yes. uh, very very cool. Now, how about a book? Is there a book you've read that you think our listeners should read as well? You know, it's it's not so much of a car book, uh, but it's a book that I read that started me to get onto this business. And this is the book that I basically got me international, base, uh, really. Uh-huh. It's called The Silent Sales Machine by Jim Cockrum. And it's an internet marketing book. It's a book to, say, start your own business, uh, mm-hmm. whether it's from home or brick and mortar or whatever. And uh, I still listen to this guy today. I mean, he still comes out with new updates and does podcasts and things. But that's the kind of book, like if you're interested in turning your hobby into a business or looking to start your own thing, that was a great book that I read. Um, the other book, it goes back to my film years, and it was called uh, Rebel Without a Crew by Robert Rodriguez, and he was a filmmaker that made a movie for $7,000 back in the uh, early 90s, and he, he was a one-man crew. But I relate to that still today because uh, it, much of what you see with my business today was all me. I mean, I do all my marketing. I do all my newsletters. I do my, my, my photography. I do the restorations, nice. the communications, the social networking, the YouTube, all that stuff. I still do that, and I still feel like the rebel without the crew. So – it still works today, but you know, so I got to get a crew now. So, <laughs> Well, there's a point in time where, yeah, you'll start to show a benefit of hiring people to do the certain things. I always tell people, pick the things that you like to do the least first and delegate those away. And in many cases, of course, in every case, find somebody who's better than you and then give yes. them the reins to do it. But uh, I understand. I I'm a one, one-legged paper hanger here at Cars yeah, as well. So I get, <laughs> I get it all the way. Now, uh, I'll remind our listeners you can find all these great resources 
resources that Chris has been so kind to share on his show notes page at carsyad.com slash Chris Vallone. Chris's last name is V-A-L-L-O-N-E. And there's another great place on the Cars Yeah website where these two great books that Chris has recommended and all the past 713 now guests have recommended. It's under the references tab called Guest Recommended Books. There's got to be close to a thousand books there. Awesome resources. I've set it up so it's quick, easy clicks to buy. It's a wonderful resource if you love to learn things through the uh, wonderful world of books. So, and audio, of course. So, Chris, this last question can be a real doozy. I call it the checkered flag. If you could have only one very cool collector car in your garage, but you can't have me buy you the Ferrari GTO and then sell it and buy a bunch of bugs, okay? <laughs> you got to keep this car. You got to enjoy it. I want you to drive it. No trailer queens here at Cars, yeah. But money is no object, so don't worry about the cost. What would that vehicle be and why? Uh, it would probably be the Volkswagen Hebmuller. That's a name I've not heard in a long time. Tell me yep. about that car. The Hebmuller was a, 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 a another coach built VW from 49 to 53. It was a two seat Roadster Beetle that they made for a very short time. And it had its own factory. And basically, it, it's such a rare car right now. I think maybe they sold 1,500 or so or. Uh, something like that back then. And then the factory burnt down. And I think maybe there's only 50 in existence right now. Whoa. Um, it's one of those cars that are, you know, pushing the mid $250,000, $300,000 range. Okay. I've, I've seen them, you know, uh, go for. It's a wacky looking Beetle. It looks like the front hood is also in the rear. Yeah. Now I know what you're talking about. It's cartoon like, which kind of fits with your animation passion and so forth. Yeah. And it looks like. A bug that's been chopped in the middle and it's got two front ends, right? Pretty much. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's got a big, big rear, you know, big yeah. hood that covers the motor compartment. And yeah, it's a, it's a very rare car. I mean, you know, if I, you know, if I had enough money to throw around, I'd probably grab that car. But uh, maybe one of these days. I'd be <laughs> thrilled to buy you one of those cars. Absolutely. <laughs> if I remember those right, I can't even remember where I saw one, but the, uh, they, some of them had really cool dual tone paint where the side of the car was one color and the rest of the car was another color. I, I yeah. Think, I think one I saw was kind of a, a light yellow and black type uh, car with white walls and so forth. Correct. But, uh, yeah. yeah that's, a correct, that's a correct color scheme, too, that they would have had on those cars. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, just a fascinating looking car. But, I mean, I know if I would have ever taken that car to a local car show, they would say, wow, what did you do to this bug? Yeah. Did you hack it off? I mean, they don't know. <laughs> Most people do not know that car. Right. So that's the other nice little thing about it. But, uh, yeah, I, I would probably hold on to that. To me, that's like holy grail stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's pretty darn cool. Very rare. And, of course, you're the first person that's asked for that car. So I love it when people pick cars that I've never been asked for before. <laughs> That's pretty darn cool. Well, Chris, you've taken us on an awesome ride today. I knew you would. Being a fellow VW fan like I am, I want to thank you for sharing your automotive journey with the Cars Yeah listeners. Could you offer us one parting piece of wisdom and guidance before you Put on down the road in that VW <laughs> Heb Mueller? I'm sure that's got a really small horsepower <laughs> motor in it. Do what you love. Like I said before, passion is great and success comes in many forms. You know, you don't have to make a boatload of money to be successful. If you're happy with what you do, like I am, uh, I, I love what I do. I come into my shop and I see my toys in front of me and I make a comfortable ink, uh, living. That's it. I love it. Well, like I said before, you have found the secret sauce to life. Absolutely. And what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you and follow you? Uh, the best place would be my website, classicvwbugs.com, uh, or you can go to my YouTube channel, which is also which is Chris Valone, and uh, of course my Facebook page, Classic VW Bugs. Uh, you can search for that, and you'll see. Very cool. Yeah, I would encourage listeners check out his uh, YouTube shows. I think they're great, and check out his website. It's really fun too. It has kind of a nostalgia feel about it as well. The way you've designed that thing, really, really nicely done. And listeners, again, you can find links to everything Chris has shared on his. Show notes page at carsyad.com. Just type Chris in the search bar, or better yet, Chris Valone in the search bar, and that page will pop right up. Chris, thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing your automotive journey with the Cars Yad listeners and me. Until we talk again, I'll see you down the road. Take care. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up 
a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah! Thank you.